Hi guys, 18 Dap here and welcome to this video. Before we make a start on it, I just want to make a quick announcement. I've been lucky enough to be selected to play for the third time in the Eve Merton Dreams Trust Charity Legends football game at the Eco Power Stadium. The event sponsored by the Eco Power Group on the 7th of May 2022 at the Eco Power Stadium. Tickets are available. Contact me on my socials if you want any. Donations will be greatly appreciated. Link to the donation pages in the description down below. And also a big thank you to CK Decorators for a personal sponsor for me. Great decorators. If you need any decorating work done, please get in touch with them. Links to their socials are in the description down below. It's going to be a good game. Get yourself down there. But for now, let's get on with this video. Hi guys, welcome to this match preview for a massive game down at the bottom of League One. Doncaster Rovers vs Gillingham. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you for sticking around the channel and supporting the channel for so long. It is greatly appreciated. If this video has brought you to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, please do. And if this is the first video that you've seen, this is a format that we go through match previews. We'll look at the previous meetings between the two clubs, current form across all competitions for both teams. I choose a player to profile from Doncaster Rovers. There's a little bit of information for the women's supporters group because this weekend's game is a big one for them. And then I choose my opponents one to watch, but as I always say, you know your club much better than what I do. So if you think there's somebody else who I've missed, please in the comments down below let me know. And then we round the video off with three predictions. There's the predict team lineup thanks to FanHub. Me and the family have got predictions league table, so there's an update on that, and then the all important score prediction at the very end. So without further ado, let's get into previous meetings. Doncaster and Gillingham faced off a total of 69 times in our history and it's all in Gillingham's favour unfortunately for us Rovers fans. Gillingham winning 35 of those meetings, Rovers only winning 14 and we've shared the spoils on 20 occasions. Drilling down into the most recent five we go back to 2019, where we, well, in the 1920 season, where we played each other three times. Uh, the second time was the FA Cup away from home, a 3 0 defeat. It's not been a happy hunting ground for Doncaster Rovers at Gillingham, because in February of 2020, it was a 2 1 defeat away from home again. But then in the 2020 21 season, it was a home win 2 1, and then a slightly better result away from home, a 2 2 draw. But then earlier this season, we got beat 1 0 away from home so yeah over the last five three defeats for the Rovers one draw one win hopefully we can turn that around on Saturday and get an all important three points which would be massive at the bottom end of the table for both teams current form we both come into this in not too dissimilar form in fairness for the Rovers it's two wins two defeats and a draw in the last five Gillingham is two draws two defeats and one win so not too dissimilar Rovers slightly better form coming into this one but <laughs> talking about form it was another horror show for the Rovers on Saturday where we just didn't turn up once again it's been a recurring theme this season for the Rovers where we've capitulated got hammered far too many times and we've said it far too many times this season but on Saturday the results went our way we didn't lose any ground on teams around us and results pretty much went our way midweek as well with all teams around us getting beat, with the exception of Morecambe, who managed to get a draw at Bolton, which was a late equaliser for Bolton, so they were outside of the bottom four for a period of time. So results going our way, but it's in our hands. We need to do our own bit. It's difficult. My head says that we're down, but my heart says that there's still a chance, so we've got to get behind the lads and hopefully cheer them on to a massive three points on Saturday. But... Last Saturday, disappointing against a team who were, who were promoted last season. For me, they're the teams that we should be competing against and we just didn't compete for a single minute in that game. And for me, the players need to look at themselves and ask if they want, if they want to be here for the fight or not. Um, the fans are doing their bit, in my opinion. Players getting hammered every other week is not acceptable for me. The amount of goals that we've shipped... It's just unacceptable for a professional football club at any level and that needs to be sorted for next season. One positive that I will take out of Saturday is the last time we received a heavy defeat. Uh, we performed okay afterwards for a couple of games so hopefully the games coming up, Gillingham, Fleetwood, Charlton, massive games this month and hopefully that result just kicks 
starts another little run of results and who knows where we could be come the end of the season. For Gillingham though, similar season as Donny, um, it's been tough so far for the Gillingham fans. Jill's in the Blood TV, a shout out for them, I'll link their channel in the description down below, very good content creator. Um, I've been enjoying watching Matt throughout the season because I feel his pain, hopefully if you're down at the ground we'll get him on fans for, so as I say, great content creator, go and check him out. Uh, but swapping managers part way through the season seems to have given Gillingham a little bit of a boost and Harris seems to have them going in the right direction um, but similar to, to McSheffrey where it's not quite enough at the minute to get us out of the bottom four but who knows, very good manager um, I think if they do avoid the drop they'll be okay next season um, if they come down to League 2 then hopefully Harris gets that opportunity to get them back into League 1 but Gillingham find themselves in touching distance of safety some good wins and draws against teams in and around them over the past couple of weeks has given them Hope, similar to, to Donny, um, can can they survive, can we survive? I think the result on Saturday will be the pivotal point for either team this season. On to player profile, so I normally choose a Donny Rovers player to, to focus on a little bit in this section, but today I've gone with the gaffer Gary McSheffrey, because I don't think I've said too much about him over recent recent weeks since he took charge. Um, but for me, it's a very different approach to what we had with Richie Wellens. I think McSheffrey is much more of a man manager. I think he takes each player as an individual, and if a player needs a arm around the shoulder and, and kind of coaching, he does that. But if he if he needs a bit of a, a bit of a telling off and a bit of a boost, then he'll do that as well. But he does it behind closed doors and not not in the media. Whereas Richie was quite open to uh, <laughs> to throwing a player under the bus if they weren't performing. We don't tend to see that with, with McSheffrey but I'd assume he's having those conversations at the cha at the training ground but for me I like the way that McSheffrey manages I think if if he's made a mistake or there's individual errors within the squad he's quite happy to take the brunt of that in front of the media which I think is is massive in terms of getting the players confidence and something that we can't really overlook with McSheffrey although we're still in the bottom four and fighting for his lives Five of our eight wins have come under McSheffrey, so he's doing something right. Um, and for me, I think he needs a clean slate, regardless of if we drop down to League Two or if we if we, we somehow survive. Um, he's still learning his trade. Is he the correct appointment? I'm still. I don't think so. In all honesty, I think we needed somebody with a bit more experience to get to get us out of the out of the situation that we're in and the position that we're in. But. I'm happy with the appointment because I think McSheffrey in the long run will be better for Doncaster Rovers than a quick fix this season. So it depends which angle you're looking at it. Um, for survival, I think he's the wrong appointment, but for longevity, I think he's the right appointment. So as I say, I think he needs a clean slate next season um, and then I'll judge him after five or ten games, depending where we are in whatever division we are in. Moving on to the women's supporters group, so a new little section for this one because it is a very important game for the women's supporters group on Saturday, um, coupled with her game too and International Women's Day which was on the 8th of March, but this game on Saturday is dedicated to International Women's Day. Uh, local girls teams have been invited down to enjoy the game as well. There's a double header with the bells straight after, I will link in the information in the description down below can get a ticket for the game after and um, I believe season tickets get the ticket for free but you just still need to get that physical ticket for the game afterwards um, the Bells are playing Burton Bells doing very well in their league there's a big screen message at halftime plus much more and for me all involved with the women's supporters group at Doncaster Rovers are doing a superb job in making Doncaster Rovers a much more inclusive place to come so hopefully their good work continues and Saturday goes off pretty well so anybody in the women's supporters group um, that you see around the ground please go ahead and say hello and check out what they're doing on this uh, important fixture on Saturday. Moving on to the opponents one to watch for me I have gone with the Dane Oliver fantastic striker 30 year old um, this season 33 appearances 8 goals 4 assists is top of the chart at Gillingham for both goals and assists this season so 
I think if we keep him quiet, we've got a good chance of coming away with three points, one point. I think we need the three. I think both teams need the three. So I'm looking forward to an open, entertaining game um, where hopefully both teams attack each other. But I think if we keep Oliver quiet, we've got a chance. Fantastic striker. I'd have him in a Rover shirt for sure. Uh, so for me, the one to watch, Vidane and Oliver. But as I said at the start of the video, you know your club much better than what I do. So in the comments down below, let us know. There's Donny Rovers fans who we should be watching out for in the Gillingham team. On to my predicted team lineup. As I said at the start of the video, this is thanks to FanHub. If you've not downloaded the app yet, please go ahead and do so. Plenty of features to get your teeth stuck into. And if you're in the queue, there is a golden ticket that you can use. It's 18D-EM6. Five uses on that remaining, so that'll get you to skip the queue straight into the app. And then you can put your predicted team lineup in for this fixture. And I have gone with... A few changes from Saturday, I think we changed the system up a little bit from the previous game. Didn't work, um, getting beat 4-0, so for me, I think we need to revert back to what was working well. Uh, so I've gone with Mitchell in goal, a back three of Younger, Williams and Olowu, with wing-backs of Noyle and Jackson, just to give us that bit of width going forward and that bit of protection at the back as well. And then a midfield four of Dan Garner, Matt Smith, Josh Martin and Tommy Rowe, with Griffiths up top on his own, and hopefully... That's an 11 that could get us three points on Saturday. Moving on to the predictions league table. So me and the family predict the scoreline for every single league game this season. If we get it spot on, we get three points. If we get the result right, but not the actual scoreline, we get one point. If we get it completely wrong, we get no points. Two of us, me and Chris, went with wins on Saturday. Dad and Max went with defeats, but none of us got the scoreline right. So there's no change in positions in the table, but it is a little bit tighter at the top. I'm at top on 24 points, Dad got a point closer, he's now on 23, Max got a point closer, he's now on 17, but Chris 10 points behind top at the bottom on 14 points. So plenty of changes, there's 8 or 9 games left to play, uh, plenty of changes in this one coming up, so keep your eye on it. And that takes me on to my score prediction for this fixture, and as I say I'm, I'm hoping for an open entertaining game, two teams who desperately need the win, but it could go the other way. It could end up being a really cagey game and one goal could win it. Um, but I'm going confident this Saturday. Um, I think we the onus is on us to, to get the win. Teams around us have still got a game in hand, so there's a little bit more breathing room for them, whereas we need to get the points on the board as quickly as possible. Home advantage could play a part so I am going with a Rovers win two goals to nil we will see <laughs> I hope I'm right um, I've been right a few times this year but I've been wrong more often than not we will see big big game for both teams I'm looking forward to it I hope you are too if you see me around please come and say hello I will be selling raffle tickets for the Eve Merton Dreams Trust game at the Bellevue Bar before so Bring some money, get a raffle ticket, your chance to win £500. Um, but yeah, come and say hello. I'm going with a 2 0 Rovers win. And that's where I'm going to leave it. If you've enjoyed it, please stick a big thumbs up on it for us, please. Comments in the section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.